This anime begins as we watch someone barely managing to stay on a tightrope. Students gossip about how he just got into another fight and how he is nothing but trouble, even the parents discuss how dangerous he is. Everyone thinks that he's too dangerous to even look at, but it's to be expected since everyone knows that he doesn't know how to interact with people. They insult his appearance, citing how he refuses to dye his hair black. Even the color of one of his eyes is wrong, and they use that to say that he must be cursed. Everyone thinks he's disgusting and the kid eventually falls off the rope. We then see our angry protagonist for the first time named Haruka Sakura. He explains that he likes the strong and couldn't care less about the weak. Nearby some guys harass a girl and wonder if she wants to go do something. She would like to bash some eggs over their heads, but that would just be a waste of good eggs. The guy warns her not to act so stuck up and he keeps her from leaving, Haruka then explains that what he hates the most are weak people who think they are strong. Haruka interferes with the gang of harassers and tells them that it's too early to be acting so lame. The leader tries to attack Haruka, but unfortunately he is one of the types that Haruka hates the most. Haruka easily drops this guy and wonders what could possibly be going on in his head that makes him think that he is strong when he is not. Haruka demands that they drill his name and face into their brains so that they can tell all the weak people they know to run away from him when they see him. Haruka or some kind of psychopath as he also wants them to know his name so that they can tell all the strong people how to find him. He declares that he is Haruka Sakura from Furin High School. Haruka leaves these jerks but the girl stopped him to say thank you. Haruka is confused and wonders if she is talking to him. She confirms that she was, and Haruka makes it very clear that he actually didn't do that to save her. He only beat those guys up because they annoyed him. Haruka declined her offer to eat something, but she ends up feeding him anyway. She can tell that he isn't from this town, and it's pretty rare for anyone to come visit. She explains that the gang he had just fought has been causing a lot of problems, and the town's public safety has become non-existent. She admits to not being from this town either, and introduces herself as Kotoha Tachibana. Haruka can't understand why she's being so nice, since most people would be afraid of him, especially after he just beat up five guys. Haruka begrudgingly eats her food when she asks him to, but he's shocked by how amazing it is. He wonders if a restaurant does take off, but she corrects him as the dummy is trying to say, take out. Tachibana points out that his eye and hair colors are all out of whack and he wonders if she has a problem with it. She is more amazed than anything but the paranoid Haruka thinks she wants to brawl. Haruka is surprised because normally people are grossed out by his appearance and they demand that he dye his hair. Haruka explains that looks don't matter in a fight and that is why he came to Furin. Furin is known for having students with the worst grades but they are also the best fighters. They are the people that slip through the cracks at other schools and end up at Furin. Furin fractions brawl every day to decide who is on top, their dedication to fighting so strong that they even fight on holidays and Haruka determined to become the top dog. Tachibana points out that this is aiming pretty high, but Haruka reveals that the reality is he is just as dumb as a brick and fighting is all he knows. To him though, nothing sounds better than fighting to be number one and this place is perfect for him. It soon becomes clear to Tachibana while he's in uniform already when school doesn't even start until tomorrow, it's because he's excited. The embarrassed Haruka explains that he just moved so he didn't have anything else to wear, but she just teases him more. Our protagonist Haruka resorts still fighting as always, and demands that they take this argument outside. Just then, when Itachibana is orderly customers almost forgets his to-go bag but Haruka reminds him. As Haruka heads home, he thinks about how strange that entire interaction was. The old man gave him some candies and told Tachibana to thank him. Haruka isn't used to so much praise, so he calls the entire town weird, including Tachibana. He points out that he's wearing the uniform of a school of delinquents, and his appearance is really strange as well. It doesn't make sense for people to be thanking him. Normal people would be on their guard around him and wouldn't trust him. Haruka once picked up someone's wallet and they accused him of stealing it. Just then Tachibana explains that Haruka made the right choice by coming to Furin, but unfortunately there's no possible way he will become the top dog. Shockingly, she states that he might not even be anyone there, let alone be top dog. Haruka points out that she has no clue how strong he is. She acknowledges that he might have strong muscles, but explains that he still won't be able to become top dog. The problem that he has is that he is all alone. Haruka becomes furious and declares that he's not so weak that he needs to rely on anyone else to win. As he leaves, Tachibana clarifies that she isn't talking about physical strength. She recommends that he could meet some Furin kids, since then he will understand. 
Nearby, a group of hoodlums wreak havoc and some poor lady calls someone for help. Haruka runs into the guys from earlier and the leader's surprised that he came. He calls our boy if you're in trash but Haruka just tries to ignore him. The leader points out that he didn't forget his face and mock Haruka for his appearance. This guy is shocked though, when he realizes that this is Haruka's real hair and eye color. They thought that he was just doing some terrible cosplay, but he points out that it being real is even more disgusting. Haruka smiles as this is what a normal reaction to his appearance is supposed to be like. This is the disgust that he has gotten used to, but it's okay because he has given up on that end. Haruka still wants to feel like he has value though. If he can be whoever is in front of him, then he can feel like he's better than them. The problem is that Haruka can't stop thinking about how Tachibana told him that he won't be top dog because he is alone. The leader declares that his gang will start a war against Furin for Hakura punching him, but Haruka isn't even listening. He's still focused on Tachibana's words as he punches the leader again and he declares that he isn't the one avoiding people. Haruka lets out his true feelings about his appearance, it doesn't make sense how people act. He knows better than anyone that he looks weird, but he never did anything to the people that insult him, this is just who he is. Haruka starts beating down on this huge group of thugs. In his mind, as long as he is the strongest and the best fighter, he will be top dog, being alone has nothing to do with it. The gang tries to attack him all at once, but it's no use as Haruka far more skilled than them. Haruka instantly takes on any opponent that comes near him and the fur is somehow heavily one-sided even though Haruka is outnumbered. Just then one of the thugs takes Tachibana hostage, but he pays dearly for this very stupid move as Haruka instantly knocks him out. Tachibana thanks him, but Haruka once again explains that the thugs just pissed him off. They tried to use a knife so he tells the idiots to keep the fight clean. One guy tries to sneak up on him, but he just ends up learning a valuable lesson. Haruka fights off even more of them, but he is hindered by having to stay in one place to defend Tachibana. He wonders why he's defending her in the first place and reminds himself that helping others never ends well. Still, Haruka continues to defend her, but eventually one of the thugs uses the knife to cut his leg. Haruka is in a really bad spot now and thinks about how this is why he doesn't defend people. He once again questions why he decided to help her and prepares to take a bat right to his skull. Just then someone stops the attack and Haruka notices that this stranger is wearing a Furin uniform. This guy surprisingly stopped the bat with his back and he tells Tachibana not to tell a certain person that she was in danger. This guy wipes out the bat wielder and tells the punks that they made a real mess in this town. His buddies arrive and the guy furiously tells the gang that they're in big trouble. Backup has arrived, but they're disappointed to see so few opponents as they didn't all need to come to fight. Haruka is in absolute shock, as he can't understand why Furin is saving him. The thugs are terrified to see the one named Toma Hiragi, but they're confident they can win since they outnumber them by a lot. Hiragi tells the others to make quick work of these guys, so they begin to absolutely demolish them. One guy goes to attack Haruka and Haruka gets caught in a terrible spot as his like can't move. Hiragi saves him again and tells Haruka to stand back if he is hurt. Haruka fiercely points out that he is not his boss and explains that the thugs were his to fight. Hiragi just tells him to stop moving around since it makes it harder for them to protect him. Haruka is completely shocked and he looks around to find that the people of the town are cheering on the Furin guys. Haruka can't believe what he is hearing and Tachibana reminds him about how she said that the town's public safety was nearly non-existent. However, this was only true up until two years ago. That all changed and it was all thanks to the students of Furin. The first thing they did was put a notice board at the town's entrance. It states that if someone brings trouble to their town by harming people or property, they will be the ones to purge them no matter who they are. Tachibana explains that somewhere along the line the townspeople gave the Furin students a new name. Because they fight to protect the town, they are known as the town's Bofurin shield called Windbreaker. After the fight, all the townspeople come out to thank the boys. Although they used to be known as low-grade hoodlums, the Furin students are now well respected in the community, however they still do fight quite a bit. They are beloved by everyone, but most importantly they are needed. Haruka is shocked at how different this town is, since the fighters are treated like heroes. They have the appearance of thugs and they even fight all the time, but no one is afraid of them. Haruka is overwhelmed with emotion and he is shocked when the townspeople tell him that he did a great job holding on his own. Some little old lady even offers to treat his wound. But Haruka can't take all the kindness and demand that they all stop. Tachibana calmly begins tend to his wound and reminds him that she said that he was alone. However, 
she explains that she could tell right away that he wasn't choosing to be. She can't figure him out completely but she explains that the people of this town need his strength. Haruka can't handle everything that's happening, and he declares that he doesn't need anyone and doesn't get involved. Tachibana is quick to point out though, that his actions say something different. He reminded the old man about his bag, and he also fought hard to protect her. Tachibana points out that he actually hasn't given up on people and he doesn't have to. At the very least, she declares that she won't turn her back on him, so she asks that he turns towards her as well. Tachibana is sure that this will be the way he can become who he wanted. Haruka still has a hard time accepting it all, and he makes a mad dash towards the others. He leaps into the air and points out how the delinquency to be playing hero now. He admits that all this stuff about being the town shield sounds really cool and he absolutely destroys the gang leader that was terrorizing the town. Everyone watches in shock and Haruka wonders if people were really stuck by him there. We then learn that this is the story about how a low-grade pariah who only knows how to fight became the town's hero. The story continues, we see Haruka arrives at Tachibana's restaurant, furious for having to carry old Grandma Sato. She fears that she might get hurt getting off his back, but he just tells Granny to hurry up. Grandma Soto shocks her boy with her dismount and he is furious and she told him that her hips hurt so much that she couldn't walk. The old lady thanks him but Haruka doesn't know how to handle such kindness. Tachibana stopped him from leaving and gives him some food, as today is his entrance ceremony. It's still pretty early though, so she once again determines that he is all pumped up to go to school. He denies it but she completely understands, so there are a lot of interesting characters that Furin. Just then some kid named Akihiko Nairiai arrives falling flat on his face, he wonders what Tachibana thinks about his new uniform, but Haruka points out that he still has the tags on his jacket. Akihiko manages to get all the tags off his clothes and Tachibana informs Haruka that the two of them will be in the same grade. Akihiko notices Haruka's strange hair and eye, so Haruka thinks he might have a problem with it. Akihiko is surprised by his attitude and determines that Haruka must have it rough, always being so stressed out at his young age. Akihiko tries to figure out why some nobody likes Haruka came to their town. Haruka is insulted, but Tachibana assure him that Akihiko is like that with everyone. Akihiko eagerly points out that Furin High is no ordinary school. Members of both Furin stood up to protect the locals. They defend the weak and curse the wicked, so they are heroes of justice. Everyone that comes to Furin admires them, and they all want to help protect the town as well. Akihiko is one of them, but he wonders why someone with no ties to Furin like Haruka came to their town. Haruka makes his intentions very clear and reveals that he is there to take the top spot. Protecting the town is great and all, but there are a lot of strong people here and Haruka just wants to be the best among them. Akihiko gets very serious and tells him that he shouldn't say things he will never be able to do. His reason for saying this though, is because he fears Haruka will go bald. Haruka has had enough of his little comedy routine so he demands that they fight, but it's getting late. Akihiko must leave as he wants to do three rounds of town patrol before the entrance ceremony. He declares that starting today he will be a hero of justice, but he shows just how clumsy he is as he leaves. Tachibana points out how funny the kid is, but Haruka can't believe a dog like him wants to be a hero of justice. Tachibana is surprised to hear Haruka talking about someone else's looks, but Haruka meant that guys like him are the type to always chicken out in fights, to him nothing is lamer. Tachibana says it's just his assumption but Haruka explains that he has seen it a sickening amount of times. Tachibana then takes a moment to teach him something. She points out that the coffee fruit is much different color than the coffee beans that she has in jars. The lesson is that if you look at things only from one perspective, you will never see its true shape. She doesn't think he should be so quick to make assumptions and encourages him to get to know people better so he can figure out what they are really like. Haruka really takes in this valuable lesson, but he just figures that she means Akihiko is a good fighter. Tachibana is disappointed as she wonders if fighting is all he cares about. After he leaves Haruka thinks he is right, just then he is stopped and offered some free bread. He's pretty confused so the beaker explains that Furin kids are always helping out the town and he just wants to give beak. They recognize Haruka as the one who stood up against the gang that they before and point out everyone is talking about him. Haruka doesn't know how to handle praise and leaves, but they insist that he takes some sandwiches for lunch. As Haruka goes through town, he finds that several other people feel the same way. Haruka can't figure out what's going on and wonders what is wrong with all the people in this town. They're acting way too nice to a guy like him, this Haruka realizes that he was just assuming that they would treat him poorly. Just Haruka is shocked when a girl begs him for help, and some alley Akihiko gets beat up for stopping a guy from bothering a girl. 
The guys just mocked him for thinking he could protect the town and they declared that he's the one that needs protecting. Akihiko tries to make them take it back, but he just gets pushed around. The guys are surprised though when Akihiko declares that those who cause pain or bring destruction to the town will be purged by both Furin. The guys all have a good laugh and point out the only guys in superhero shows talk like that. The leader gets really annoyed and declares that it doesn't matter if Akihiko is a windbreaker, he is the one that will be purged. The guy prepares to attack him, but Haruka shows up just in time to help Akihiko. Akihiko is shocked and wonders why Haruka is saving him but Haruka doesn't even pay him any attention. The bullies laugh is Haruka there to save his buddy but Haruka insulted by that, he reveals that it's not true and he just hates weaklings that think they are strong. Haruka declares that it makes them sick, so the bullies decide to show them what they can do. Akihiko fears for his safety as he is sure that Haruka can't find them on his own but there's nothing to worry about as the guys are all unconscious just seconds later. Akihiko is surprised that he handled them in the blink of an eye and he wonders just who Haruka is. Akihiko is terrified of him now but he still thanks Haruka for his help. He is sure that Haruka is disappointed that someone like him is in Bofurin and attending Furin High but Haruka just points out that he wasn't saving him. Haruka calls him a typical poser and was nearly that he should know what he is and is not capable of. Akihiko explains that he always used to get beat up in middle school, one day he was saved by someone from Furin and it was someone that he would normally be scared of. In that moment though, the guy was really cool so Akihiko wanted to be just like him. Akihiko came to Furin to become just as awesome but he breaks down as he realizes that he is just pathetic. Haruka thinks about how he assumed that Akihiko was the type to chicken out in fights but it's clear that he actually stood up for himself. Haruka tells Akihiko that he is a weak fighter but there's a chance that he might not be that lame. Akihiko is shocked and the girl he protected arrives to thank him for sticking up for her. She thanks Haruka too but he tries to get out of there, Akihiko stops him and once again breaks out his little book. He bombards Haruka with questions about his height weight blood type and hobbies, the kid goes crazy analyzing Haruka and taking notes on him. Haruka stops him so Akihiko explains that he just likes gathering data on guys he likes and things are cool. Haruka just tells him to do whatever he wants so Akihiko takes this as an invitation to watch Haruka up close and personal. Akihiko offers to show him around and reveals that while he might not be any help in that fight, he is the best guy when it comes to the town and the people living there. Haruka is then surprised when Akihiko declares that he can guide Haruka all the way to the top. Moments later though, Akihiko must encourage Haruka to get going but he's busy eating because he gets really hungry after fighting. Haruka is amazed by how good the bread is, and Akihiko gets caught up in it too but he realizes that they have to hurry up and go to school. The two eventually make it there and Haruka is excited since there will be a bunch of people like those guys he met before. Akihiko finds the class roster, where he is delighted to find that he and Haruka are in the same class. Akihiko is amazed by all the other names on the list, but he doesn't actually know them personally, they are just people he admires. Haruka doesn't think it matters who is in their class but Akihiko points out that there will be spending a lot of time around these people. Just then Akihiko is shocked by one name in particular and Haruka points out that he has lost all his energy. Akihiko gets over it though as Haruka tried to be friendly to everyone in class and he tries to encourage him to smile at them. Haruka thinks he must be joking but Akihiko points out that members of Bofurin gather together to protect the town. Haruka is not from there so the guys definitely won't like that and they will ask Haruka why he came to Furin. Akihiko thinks it will be very important to show that Haruka is harmless and not Bofurin's enemy. Haruka isn't even listening though as he is warming up. Akihiko wonders why and he is shocked when Haruka says that he's just getting ready for anything. Akihiko is disappointed that he wasn't listening and points out that it's an outsider, even the slightest misunderstanding could turn the entire school against him. Haruka doesn't actually care if every single person turns against him and he reminds Akihiko that he is there to fight his way to the top. Haruka enters the class and Akihiko is horrified when it becomes pretty obvious that everyone is staring at him. The class is filled with tough looking students, but Haruka couldn't ask for anything better. One student knows who Haruka is but Haruka instantly has his guard up. Akihiko apologizes for him and instantly recognizes this student from his book. However, the kid says he's Leonardo DiCaprio. Haruka falls for it at first and Akihiko had no clue that this cold looking dude could be such a jokester. Akihiko knows that his name is actually Hayato Suwa and Suwa says that his eye patch seals away an ancient Chinese spirit in his eye. 
Haruka loses his temper when he realizes that the kid is all talk, but Suo gets serious and approaches Haruka. The moment becomes tense that Akihiko fears that people from out of town really are treated as anomalies. Haruka prepares for a fight and Akihiko is terrified that there might not be a way to stop it. Just then he is shocked when Suo just pets Haruka on the back and compliments him for being the star of the Main Street Brawl that happened the day before. The other students wonder what he's talking about so Suo explains that before Haragi arrived at the brawl, Haruka was the one protecting the town first. Akihiko didn't even know this and the other students began to gather around Haruka. There were rumors about an unknown student in their uniform and they are glad that this person did a good job helping the town. They're a bit too close for comfort and Akihiko determines that this is better than them turning against Haruka. It's pretty clear that they won't think of him as their enemy, so Akihiko relaxes as the person he feared before should be okay with Haruka too. The guys still wonder what he came to Furin in the first place, so Haruka reveals that he came for the top spot. They are all surprised when Akihiko tries to explain this Haruka isn't there to hold them down and beat them up. Haruka says that he actually is, but his new buddy tells them to let him handle this. Just then a table gets tossed and it's some terrifying student. Haruka gets an excited look on his face, but Akihiko begs him not to fight this guy. He is the most dangerous guy in their class and might even be the most dangerous in the entire school. His name is Kyotaro. Haruka declares that he prefers fighting mad dogs like him, so Kyotaro says that he will crush him. Kyotaro throws a powerful punch but Akihiko is shocked when he realizes that Suo instantly moved him out of the way. Haruka dodged it as well and compliments Kyotaro as a type he expected to see in Furin. Kyotaro gets even more upset but this is exactly what Haruka was hoping for. That brings the episode to an end. Thanks for watching. Want next part subscribe the channel and turn on notification bell.